Tennessee and the Citrus Extreme Podcast today. My name is Teddy. Next to me is Terence. I'm Tuscan, right? Yeah, excellent, yes. A consultant and trainer. Yes. Can you explain a little bit what you do for the business, for the people? Okay. Uh, I think, I think that put in the simplest term, is that we offer uh, training consultancy services to our clients. Specifically, we we have trainers, including myself, to uh, run facilitation workshop um, on leadership, management, sales and training, uh, sales and service training uh, for our clients. Okay. Yeah. So you're transforming people for better business performance. Anyway, yes. Yes. So how do you see people's attribute? Who are the ones that can transform them? What kind of people that think it's trainable? Are people. Well, I, I think I think in, in our in our mindset right. there is there is no people who are not trainable. Okay. okay. I think, uh, but there are people that that would be more responsive to training and see more immediate or prominent transformation right. than others. Right. Those attributes, including I think um, whether they see there there is a need for them um, to to transform. Or to learn uh, their attitude, whether they may, can do attitude. I think I think these are some of the examples of attributes that that will differentiate people who are more trainable, if I use your term, than the others. Okay. Except you say you are training leaders, right? Uh, I personally train more leaders. My my okay. team will train so, other people as well. Who are the leaders? What kind of you know people that will be leaders? Who are, I mean, followers? Do they have some kind of special you know, attributes or can we see that? I mean, this is going to be a future leader. This one is really doable, right? This one may be, or this may not be. So how do we actually see people as a leader? Uh, we, we, don't have, um, we, we don't have really a, a kind of scanner right. um, in a way to spot which one is leader, but we do have some assessment too. Uh, to to uh, assess or to reflect them just like a mirror mm. to reflect where you are uh, as a leader and what are the opportunity for improvement for each each one of us and and in our opinion everyone can be a leader okay. leadership is everyone's business right. it, it is also also a key concept of the book. That okay. that uh, that is in in, um, in this book is called Leadership Challenge by Jim Cruz and Barry Postman. Leadership is everyone's business. It is not a born trait. Okay. It is a, a set of teachable and learnable and measurable skills and behaviors that everyone can learn. Okay. Yep. So leader, I mean, there's a lot of types of leaders, right? So in the present time, in the COVID time, what do you think? I mean, the best attribute that will drive a better leader nowadays. I think there are immediately I can think of two. Um, the first one is credibility. Okay. The second one is uh, persistence or optimism. Okay. okay. So I, I think these two, I mean, in particularly in this time, is particularly important. But credibility, I think, that whether it's uh, it's COVID time or not, it is oh. all time, all time we we need to be we need to be credible, because if you don't believe in the messenger, you won't believe in the message. Right. So. If you're not credible, your team will not likely to listen to you, exactly. and you can't be a good leader. Right. Okay. So the second point about optimism or, or persistence, mm -hmm. I, I think this is particularly important in this time uh, regarding regarding the um, we we we, live, we need to live with uncertainty. Right. We need to have someone who is optimistic and see the future in a constructive manner that if we go through these tough times we'll, we'll see an even better future right. so so a leader lead able to, is able to communicate and see the future that way and and to lead the team to go through all the tough times i think is really important attribute right. uh, for the current leader in, in this difficult time so since a lot of our audience is entrepreneur, right? Yeah. Suppose an entrepreneur will lead the team. Yep. But may not be their good leaders sometimes. Mm. What do you see the difference there? If should there be any differences? If yes, mm. how can we any bridge the gap between 
Well, uh, again, I, I think in, in our mindset, um, there is no good or bad leader. Right. There is always room for improvement. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you are not good enough right now, but there are always room for improvement. Maybe you are you are really outstanding now. Still, you can do better. Yeah. So I, I see it this way. Okay. So um, and and in terms of um, in terms of uh, being a good leader. I think the, there are um, there are five things, or, or according to research, there are five practices, five behaviors that are instrumental to be an exemplary leader. Okay. okay. So and it is also introduced by this book. Yeah. Um, Can you learn more? Yeah. So the, the five practices are first of all, model the way. Okay. okay. Model the way. That means you you are you need to be firstly credible. Right. You. Do what you say you will do. You keep your promises. Okay. So it's a foundation of leadership. Credibility is the foundation of leadership. So this is the first one. The second one is to inspire a shared vision. Okay. So leaders, just like what I said, you you need to see the future, and you inspire people and enlist them to go to a place that you've never been to. Yeah. Okay. And that place is not only the leader you personally want to go. But it is for common good, so that your team are motivated and passionate to go to that place together with you. So this is the inspired shared mission. The third one is challenge the process. So just imagine if you repeatedly doing the same thing every day, you won't be able to go to a place that you've never been to. So you have to challenge the process. You have to identify opportunities to improve and to innovate. And then we we go through those tough times because when you try new things, it may not be you do it right first time. Yeah. We we may face those kind of tough time, tough right. times. Right. Okay, so we learn challenge process. When we face the challenge, as a leader, we need to be optimistic, and then ask, what shall we learn? What can we learn from the mistakes that we've made, and move forward? Right. Okay, not blaming them by making mistakes. There, so there's challenge process. The third one, the fourth one is enable others to act. Empowerment. Yeah, as empowerment exactly. So you need to you need to enable your people to have the willingness as well as the skills to go together with you, and that takes a lot of uh, uh, building effective team, listening to diverse point of view. Okay, and then the fifth one is encourage the heart. So you, I, I think I think uh, yeah, passion. Uh, I think I think it's very important that even uh, if you if you are uh, you, I mean I think every one of us experience some something like, oh it's so tough in the work environment. That's a good. Okay. Uh, following this leader, working for this company, that's a good. Okay. Am I being valued? Okay. Am I being recognized for the for the effort and for the work and achievement that I've made? So encourage the heart is the fifth practice okay. that we need to do. So in summary, model the way, inspire shared vision, challenge the process, enable others to act, encourage the heart. These are the five fundamental practices of exemplary leaders do. Right. And this is based. It is not only based on my personal opinion, and this is based on over 30 years of research okay. by this book. Right. Right. Yeah, Jim Cooper said it very closely. Right. Yes. Interesting. So nowadays, the COVID time, we have a lot of downtime. Right? Right. People lose a job, right? right? And employees may be a little bit you know, shitty. Yep. So how can, I mean, you need this really a safe environment and we want for people to drive and say, you understand, okay, we have a shared vision, right? Yep. And I'm more to me. Yep. But yet, they may not be very you know, relaxing because after all, this is a stop. Yep. So how can we leader, I mean, give them in the same environment we go there, well, we try together, we try to grow together, we I mean, work together, right? Mm. We work for the standard excellence, make sure that yeah. we still, I mean, moving on, despite other people may be dying sometimes, right? But we're still on the track. How do you do that as a leader? Okay, I think I think there are, there are two things. Okay. First of all, you create a safe environment. That means we, we need to create an environment that mistake is allowed. Okay. okay. So what does it mean? We 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 don't say we are not saying that. Oh, so make mistake or make mistake. Okay. So but but what I'm saying that when when there there are mistakes, 
okay? So uh, what a leader should do is to, as I just mentioned, really focus on, okay, so now we, we see, this, we'd see this challenge. So uh, what should we do next? Okay. We always forward okay, look forward, so that when, when your team members know that uh, this leader style is that okay, uh, even if I make a mistake, we look forward. Okay, so it is a safe environment for them. Okay, so is it the first thing? Okay, and uh, the second thing is to create small wins. Okay, that is also very important. Right. So keep the momentum. Yeah, if, if only have the first one, then people keep on mis making mistakes, keep on making mistakes. Okay, then it, it would, yeah, it it doesn't make any good. Okay, and it would it wouldn't be able to build confidence. So as a leader, you, we need to identify small wins okay. in order to keep the momentum, right. to build confidence, right. and so that people would believe that we will be better because we see something better that has happened. Okay. Okay. We need to identify small win opportunities. So I, I think the uh, allow mistake. Okay, by focusing, looking forward, right. uh, and also to create small wins are the two points that okay. to your question. Yeah. Right. So in looking forward, in that case, you have a leadership vision, right? Yep. So with that vision, we have a lot of mechanics of the drive to keep moving on, right? Mm -hmm. During the interim, we have a lot of mistakes. Yep. Of course, we have people to reflect and yep. learn, right? Yep. So I read a book called uh, Leaders Keep Lost, a mm -hmm. mm -hmm. thing. What do you think? I mean, as a leader, we should be a certain leadership. Right? I mean, how do you see that? Mm -hmm. I, see that. I, I think I think it makes sense. It makes sense. We need to um, uh, so, but certain leadership. That means actually it, it focuses on empowering people. Mm -hmm. Okay, empowering people. So I, I would say that that is that is complementary to what I just said. Right. So in certain leadership, we we need to help our people grow. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it is in line with my enable others to act, actually, okay? But still, I would say that uh, uh, when only, not only that we empower people, but before that, we need to have a shared passion, shared aspiration, or shared vision. It's a place that we need to go together, and then we, we need to create an environment to support our people, to, to let them realize that when on their journey towards our shared aspirational journey or for our vision, you also benefit, you also grow together with the team so that you see the benefits. Yeah. So in this COVID time, there's a lot of changes, right? Students quote never maintained. So we have to really move on. Yeah. So as a leader, when you're seeing I mean a new sort of new year of I mean this is yeah. how can we actually fix though you know team member can help you move on? Or on the other side, we have a lot of jobs I mean, member that may not be I mean, capable to I mean, help you move along. Mm -hmm. So it's a hard issue, right? Mm -hmm. So how to actually do this mm -hmm. with agile, sort of agile team? Mm -hmm. We have to make a tough choice of leaving some of those being outdated and bringing those with you that I mean, you want. Mm -hmm. How can you do it any better? So your question is how do we make the uh, decision of who leave? And who stay? Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, right? Giving them I mean, lean movement, giving the I mean the challenge of business. We mm -hmm. cannot know all those big people who be moving along. We can't stop it, right? Yeah. So we make choices and how do you make the right choice and then I'm giving advice to make sure that we really hurt the change in culture yep. or the harmonious situation but at the same time, why do this is long? Yep, okay. This is a tough question. Yeah. Yep. Well, I, I would say that, okay. So if you if you're in lead leader position for long, so I, I think it would be uh, everyone has their own decision making style in terms of how to do that. I think from the business perspective, you you would have you have the kind of sense of uh, who is adding more value to the team, who is more indispensable. Okay, so I think all these are kind of uh, known or understandable uh, by my most leaders. What I would like to add, what I would like to add, is that uh, because what I just mentioned is the is the current state. Right. You see, you, uh, from the past performance, 
you look at the performance, you look at the skill set, look at how many customers they are having, look at how many, how many revenue they're generating. So this kind of thing is part. Okay. So I would like to remind leaders, if we are to make this session, is to, to look forward as well. Okay. Look forward as well, that means what? That means who, I mean, in, in view of the possible future changes of the business model, uh, of, the, of, your, of your own business, um, what kind of qualities we need for the future? Okay, so that adds to the criteria. Say, so for example, uh, even though they they currently they currently they um, they are not uh, meeting, uh, they are they are not the top performers. Okay, but if you see that uh, this this guy is really persistent, this guy is really is really um, agile in a way. Uh, and then, and then in, a, in, in your future business model, this kind of people uh, you think is, is, a, is a best fit for them, don't leave them just because of their current performance is not the top performance. Right. I think, I think the potential. That, yeah, it's the potential. And that potential that met with your future requirements. Right. Yeah, okay, so, so this, is, um, this is something that I, I, I think we, we need to, uh, to, to, to have add consideration. Yeah. Okay. Uh, apart from our entrepreneurs, right? I yeah. think there are a lot of managers yeah. reading our podcast. Yeah. So how do you differentiate managers and leaders? How can managers mm -hmm. can escalate themselves, do better to be future leaders? Okay. So so that that back to a kind of a, um, because of a definition of what is leader, what is manager. Okay. Um, to me, I think leader, put it in a very simple term, is to do the right thing. Manager, do things right. right. Okay. Leaders focus more on the future. Yeah. The manager focus more more on the current and the short term goal. Okay. In a way. Okay. So, uh, having said that, that is a conceptual definition. Okay. And then, if you're a manager, I would like to ask you uh, whether you think you're a manager or you're a leader. Okay. So, and then, most in most cases. You are having two hats on. Okay, you are both a manager and a leader. Okay, you you need to support the mandate of your boss to do the things right. Okay, so this is manager managerial role, but at the same time, you need to focus on the future to, on how to develop your team and what are the right things for the for your department or your team's future for your team for your department. So that is a leadership role. So, so I think I think this is this is not uh, saying that you are you are either a leader or you are a manager, or you are a manager and then you need to ask it to be a leader. And actually, everyone putting two hats on sure. at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, entrepreneurs are challenging. They think that they are leaders, right? Yeah. To the good, I mean, to a bad leader, there's a lot of entrepreneurs you just mentioned. Is there anything that should be avoid any trap to avoid leader in terms of that? Mm -hmm. uh, it, again, uh, it really depends on how we determine, uh, how how we say, uh, how we define that. Right. Uh, anything I mean, what what does it work for a leader? So I, I think that as a leader, uh, need to be really aware that okay, say for example. Uh, because I, I also I also study personality and I I'm a very keen fan on personality and leadership as well. Okay. So you should be right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading. Okay. <laughs> so actually, uh, I I think I think the I just take an example. It, it's not that uh, which one is uh, is bad. Okay. I, I would say that, for example, if you are a more a thinker type of leader, okay, thinker type, this is focus on logic. Focus on result, objective oriented, go, 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 okay, get things done. Okay. So this kind of leader, okay, they they have the advantage or, or the strength to drive things, okay, get things done, make things happen. This is what a leader need. Okay. So those kind of leader, because of they they focus very much on the task, on the objective, on things, on system. People speeding. Is all, usually 
their kind of uh, weakness okay. or they're less sensitive. Okay. So for this kind of leader, you need to really pay attention to to the feelings of other people. Right. Okay. So and actually, I'm this kind of leader. Really? Yes. Uh, and uh, I I learn, and then I I learn a big lesson that I, I try to adjust myself right now. Uh, and it takes years. For example, because I am so driven, I'm so focused on objective getting stuff, then I um, back back in the early days of my, my company, I when I had only four people in, in a month, uh, I lost fifty percent of them. I lost two. Okay. That's already two. Uh, two out of four is already fifty percent. Yeah. And and these two these two people um, are not that bad. Right. It's just that it's not not yet to the stage of excellence. Right. They're good. Right. Okay. And and uh, I realized that uh, and I really realized that it's my style, very driven, but I am less sensitive to the feelings and then uh, they leave because of my style, I know that. Okay. So, and, and the key is, um, all the aftermath need to be taken care of by myself. And they're just even tougher. Okay. So I need to kind of, I need to talk to them, see whether I can retain them. I need to recruit. I need to do a lot of interviews and then I need to retrain, uh, training on the new, new people, etc. So that is a big cost to me. So, so I realized that uh, if, a, if a very thinker type of leader pay attention or be more sensitive to people and do more encourage the heart, <laughs> okay, it is, it's really, really important. Okay. On the other hand, the other, the other side of the, of, of the spectrum is if you are a feeder type of leader, that means you are more, more people mean. Uh, very people sensitive. Uh, do you like harmony? Um, do you do you really care about people's feeling? This kind of leader, they they can naturally draw a group of people around them. Okay. However, their weakness is that when tough needs, decision need to be made, they may make decision based on harmony, based on people's feeling, more than. What is right for the company? Okay. So, so, if, so I, I, I always say that there is no one is perfect. Yeah. But if you're more aware of who you are, your natural preference, right. and then you pay attention to to to, to, the, to your short form. Okay. I think I think that that is that is key. Right. Thank you, Terence. You, you, you tell us that many leaders should always reflect on self. Yes. Right? Yes. They think about what we lack. Yes. And try to make use of other resources to back up. At the same time, the reflection, move on, get us to move on, right? Yep. That's very important for a team building. Yep. After all, leader is not a single person. Yep. He's the head of the team. He yep. has support for other people as well. Yep. Right? Yep. So lastly, I mean, if you can say one word okay, to those entrepreneurs, okay, mm -hmm. how do you lead? What word would you choose? Like say, for example, mm. <coughs> observe. Hmm. What kind of word you get one word in that? If one word. If there is only one word. Oh. Okay. I, I, I would say two. Uh, okay. which which I, I think I, I just mentioned. The first one is credibility. Okay. Okay. I see a lot of leaders who fail to lead the team because they did not do what uh, what they said they could do. Right. So they do not keep their promises, they, they're not credible. Right. So first word, the second word is really vision. So okay. credibility and vision. Okay. So great. these are the two key words that you you really need to inspire people um, to to change. Right. Just like my company right now, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, we are kind of uh, facing the biggest hit ever mm -hmm. uh, during of the 18 years of the establishment. And and now uh, my team has also been shaking, shaking in terms of in terms of confidence. Right. But right now we are transforming our company to from a traditional training consultancy right. 
to a total learning solution provider with digital learning and blended learning. We just, we just signed partnership with a world leader in digital learning. Okay, so our offering will be much better, much wider, okay, and, and, then, and then the solution can really save cost to our clients and add value to our clients. Okay, and it is also over the train. So, so what I'm trying to illustrate is that when the, when the team's confidence is shaking, just I think, I think it's not only my experience, I, th I think it's a lot of companies experiencing that. So, so only saying that will be good, will be good is not enough. Okay, you need to show them, you need to show them we're good. Okay, so, so just like what, what we are doing right now is that it is to really transform, okay? And then I involve, involve our people in, in, during the process of searching and negotiating and discussion with, the, with our partner, with this, our strategic partner, so that they are involved. And then quick win example is we sign a contract of the, of the agreement. So okay. you show them the way, and you yep. do it in model it. Yep. Let them see the good way, yep. make them confidence, right? Yep. So go back to your credibility as a leader, yep. and the vision, yes. and the direction of the company, yes. right? Yes. So uh, well, people say that well, people don't just believe in what you're doing. Yep. They believe in what you believe in. Mm -hmm. So it just I mean what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. As a leader, you have to really let people believe in what you are believing, and that's the vision. Yes. I, I, I can't agree more. It, it, it's actually, I think they link together. Yeah. Okay. What you believe in, okay, you need to let people know. But then, back to the point of credibility and do what you say you would do. How can people believe that what you believe in? Right. It's role modeling. It's what you actually behave. What kind of, what kind of decision you make. How you make decision? What is your behavior? And are you really say for example you say, okay, I really believe in customer satisfaction. Say for example, okay, this is something that we believe in, and I, I'm ask, urging my team to do um, to to do the best for best uh, customer experience, customer satisfaction. Okay, if I say that, if I really believe in that, okay, I have to do things that. My team can know that I, I'm really believing in it. Say, for example, if I if I say that it's important, but then when I chat with them, I only talk with them. Okay, how about you make it sales? Okay, I never ask about client satisfaction. I never chat with our clients. If this is what I do, you won't believe that I I, I believe in customer satisfaction. So so what you believe in has to tie with what you get paid, how you make decisions, how you spend time, exactly. and what you pay attention to. So these two have to be tied together, into, and then we can achieve, do what you say you would do, and then we are talking about, you are really a credible leader. That's great. So the tech is correct, right? Yep. So I think the audience will learn a lot on your credibility and vision. So this book, right? Yep. This is China, right? Yep. They give you all the elements that you can learn from it, right? Yes. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.